Thank you. Um, so I've been to events where the day is scheduled so that the best speaker is last. <laughs> I have also been to events where the day is scheduled so that the least interesting speaker is last. So you will have to tell me which way today was structured at, in, in a little while. Um, uh, if you want to get, also, with no disrespect to all the other awesome speakers, I don't understand why people make slides for talks when you could just make a WordPress website for a talk. So... If you would like to get to my slides or whatever they are, it's just my name, Glenn, G-L-E-N-N, dot Zuckman, Z-U-C-M-A-N, dot com, slash talks. And then once you get here to Glenn dot Zuckman dot uh, com slash talks, uh, you can either click on venues and you see WordCamp Santa Cruz is first, or you can click on topics, freedom is a feature. Both links take you to the same place, which is this set of pages or topics. So our topics for today, we have uh, eight things to go through. Um, we have, so I don't have enough for the whole room, but a few select lucky attendees today will get a prize or a gift, something free, free stuff, because it's all about free. Uh, and then we want to say a little bit about an interesting art project called Google AdWords happening. Um, then we'll talk about WordPress is, it being open source, also, Hi, it's me. Um, a little bit about free speech and free beer. Uh, then we're talking about the four freedoms. Uh, we're gonna talk about Firefox and another web browser called Waterfox. We're gonna talk about soup. This is probably the most important part of the talk is the soup. I know you think the beer is, but the soup is kinda, you'll see in a minute. And then we're talking about community. So let's dive in. We'll start with the free stuff. So um, I brought some gifts for a few lucky attendees today. Um, and of course, if I just picked the gift for you, that wouldn't really be about the freedom we're talking about. So you get a choice. We have these cool megaphones that I brought. They've got this kind of really shiny mylar finish thing going. And you can amplify your voice with these. Watch. Hey, can you hear me? <laughs> And then, if you prefer, we've also got this uh, Voodoo Ranger Imperial IPA that you could choose from. So, um, hi, I'm Glenn. Hi, I'm Sandy. Sandy, would you like a megaphone or a beer? A beer. You'll take the free beer. <laughs> hi, I'm Glenn. I'm Joe. Joe, would you, like a, uh, would you like some free speech? I like free speech. Or would you like some free beer? Free speech. You'll take the free speech. Good choice. Hi. Hi. I'm Glenn. I'm Tom. Tom, it looks like you already got the free the beer. Would you like oh, some free speech see, or see. some free beer? Oh, I'll take the beer. Okay. <laughs> well, we should we should pay attention to our awesome captioning people. Hi, I'm Glenn. I'm Maggie. Maggie, would you like some free speech or some free beer? I'll take the beer. Take the beer. Okay. <laughs> there goes the captioning. <laughs> no, she did the morning shift. <laughs> Hi, I'm Glenn. Hi, I'm Nick. Nick, would you like some free speech? Free speech would do. Free speech for Nick, okay. And, uh... He's better, he's only 21. <laughs> <laughs> Who else would like a free gift today? Yeah, Steve, you would, right? Sure, I'll what take would you, the beer. You'll take the free beer, okay. <laughs> so, let the record show that we enlightened, informed, Erudite attendees of WordCamp Santa Clarita 2019 have chosen free beer over free speech two to one or four to two. Um, more on that in a minute. But let me tell you about this interesting. So we're going to really get into WordPress in a sec. But before we do, let me say a little bit more about free and freedom uh, and tell you about this interesting project that this artist did a few years back. So this is a, an artist named Christoph Bruno, and his project of 2002, so 17 years ago, uh, is Google AdWords Happening. So as you know, um, you can go to AdWords and you can buy words. And so if I am selling widgets, I can buy the word widget, and then when somebody comes and searches 
for widget. Uh, you know, there's the organic search and then there's the sponsored content that would come around. People would see my sponsored purchasing of the word widget and maybe they'd buy a widget from me. So Christoph Bruno said, well, I think I will do a project with Google AdWords, but instead of selling a widget, um, if somebody searches on the word maybe depression, I will give them a poem about love. So his idea was to serve poems instead of commodities. So in 24 hours, he served 12,000 poems to people for keywords that he had purchased. And at the end of 24 hours, Google figured out what he was doing and they banned him. And they said, you are perverting the system. You may not use Google AdWords for art. You can only sell commodities here. So that's a whole other conversation that we don't need to have today. But as part of the documentation of his project, he published the prices of some words at that time, back in 20, 2002, uh, which is what I want to just kind of offer for your consideration before we dive in a little more to uh, WordPress and freedom. So here's his table of the prices of some words. So back in 2002, Britney Spears was worth 144 bucks. Bin Laden was worth $24 and apparently anal was worth 319. <laughs> um, so here's something interesting. The word free, as we demonstrated just moments ago in this very room, the word free of the words he looked up, I don't know about all words in the English language, but the words he looked up, free was the most expensive word at $7,500. One of the cheapest words in all of AdWords is freedom at a buck 88. It would seem that we will pay almost any price for free beer. But if I might be so bold, we don't give a crap about freedom. Also interesting, so there's lots of other interesting things in his table here, but um, uh, kind of similar to free versus freedom, you'll notice that sex is a $3,800 word, but love is only a $1,200 word. It's not as big a gap as free and freedom, but once again, sex would seem to be worth three times more to us than love. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, and if you're, if you're curious, I've got uh, a, a link to the project where you can see more. So anyway, some thoughts about, well, let me ask you actually, um, what is freedom? Anybody? It's not a trick question. Do you have an answer, yes? No, um, or no, you're just no. really listening intently. Um, freedom is opportunity, choice. Freedom is opportunity. That's awesome. What about you guys? What's freedom? Um, the freedom to do what I want. Okay. What else is freedom? Other other thoughts? Yeah. Not only to do what you want, but to think whatever you want, whatever, without anybody telling you not to or trying to <coughs> shape how you think. Yeah. So there's a, a famous uh, Salman Rushdie quotation that's very similar to what you just said. Uh, he was talking specifically about the Quran, but you could apply it to almost anything, that when we are not allowed to think new thoughts, that you know, our lives are constrained in really powerful ways. So, um, we, now it could be, it's possible that, that more people chose the free beer today because my free speech was, was not that cool, it's a little bit cheesy, but <laughs> That is free speech. Free speech is messy. Free speech is uncomfortable. If you are the Jewish ACLU lawyer, do you go to court to defend the neo-Nazi right to march? Free speech is not always comfortable. Uh, but as Americans, I think we think it matters. Not to go any more deeper into politics, let's go into something that's really cool and gives you sort of free speech and free beer which is probably also why you're here today. So
So um, WordPress and also WordPress is open source and also hi, it's me. So um, how many are familiar with Creative Commons? Everybody is. Okay. So I assume then you know what open source software is also, yes? Great. So everything that I create, I make is licensed Creative Commons attribution. Feel free to use it, remix it, destroy it, tear it apart, whatever you like. I teach art at Long Beach State. Here's a couple of the websites from those classes I teach there. Here's my portfolio. I've been doing a lot of photography lately. You can see my street photography, my photojournalism, some nonfiction photography. I did a series on Donald Trump's star on Hollywood Boulevard. Um, so there's a thing called object-oriented ontology, which is kind of about this objects having autonomy. And I've sort of created this website about water. You can take a look at that. I've got a lot of selfies. Oh, most importantly, the hair color website. <laughs> So here you can see various shades of my hair and Emma Stone's hair. <laughs> and if you check the menu, uh, you can see all the Emma Stone pictures or all the Glenn pictures or the different levels of hair color from, light to, from dark to light or the different tones. Whatever you want to look up, it's all available. Uh, so enough about me. Well, almost enough about me. Here's a bonus question. See if anybody knows. I have two beers and a lot of free speech left. Um, what do street photography and open source software have in common? You can uh, uh, take a photograph uh, in public and not get like sued over it because it's in the public space. I have to admit, though, I know this because you taught it to me uh, a couple word camps ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for that excellent, even if primed answer, you win free speech and free beer. <laughs> oh, hey. Uh, I mean, I was going to go for the free speech. <laughs> um, so in order to fully explain this answer, I have to give you my sad confession. And I should say, you, I am a free culture advocate. A lot of you, I mean, how many, why are we here? Let me back up before we get to my sad confession. Uh, how many people are creating e-commerce sites, things like that? A lot of us. Are there any bloggers? A lot of us. So what all are we using WordPress for, for example? Uh, sell movies, plays. Okay, awesome. I like that. Uh, car wash site. Food blog. Personal growth and fitness. Awesome. Uh, I'm a buck and I do everything. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> to sell my art. Nice. Membership site, faithful life. Uh, customer product service. Awesome. Client information. So that's a great range of things. And I guess what I want to just mention is I'm not really anti people making money. So there are plenty of occasions when things would want to be copyright. And I'm not really saying that that shouldn't exist. But the world that I'm personally interested in is more a free culture, an, an open source software kind of world. So the sad confession is that before 2007, uh, everything that I created, I put Circle C copyright all rights reserved on. And then uh, a couple of things happened in 2007. In the summer of 07, I went to a event somewhat like this, but it was a different topic slightly. It was called Pixelodeon. It was the first annual Pixelodeon, and it turned out to be the last annual Pixelodeon. But it was an awesome event, and among all the other great things that happened was I had um, a pretty extended conversation with a guy named John Phillips, who at the time was an evangelist for Creative Commons. I didn't really even know much about Creative Commons at the time, but our conversation really stirred a lot of ideas for me. And then a couple of months later, I went to another event. This one was called Bar Camp Los Angeles. And there I had this long conversation with Richard Stallman. And between John Phillips and Richard Stallman, it was kind of my Damascene conversion. And suddenly I had converted to the Church of Free Culture. Uh, and today, again, not objecting to anybody earning a living, but today when I see that circle C, it's like a slap in the face to me. It just hurts. It just hurts to see 
things locked down when I'd like things to move freely. Um, you know, when I teach at Long Beach, sometimes when I, I just have people do stuff now, I don't really give lectures anymore. But when I used to give lectures, I would look for images for the lectures, and you could do a Google search and steal somebody's image. You could go to Flickr and find something that was good for your talk, and you could ask for permission. Um, and what happens if you ask somebody if you can use their Flickr photo? 87% of the time, the answer is no reply whatsoever, you never hear back. Uh, and then 11% of the time, the answer is yes, but it comes three weeks later and you needed it tomorrow. And then 1% of the time, people actually say yes right away. Almost nobody ever says no. Mostly you just don't get a reply. Or you could go to Flickr and do a Creative Commons search and find an image that someone has already allowed you to use. So for simple things like just finding an image for a talk at school that, sure, if you just stole it off the web, it, nothing would ever really happen, but you're, you're kind of breaking the rules. Creative Commons allows someone who's taken a photo that they love, that they're not trying to sell to anybody particularly, and lets you use it in your lecture at school or do other things. So it's really been an empowering adventure for me. Okay, enough about me and adventures. Let's say a couple words about WordPress, probably why we're here. So you, yeah, uh, so jump in on anything, anytime. Yes, oh, I didn't answer it, that, that, did I? <laughs> no, no, you probably did, but does street photography require a talent release? And mm -hmm. if not, when does public, either video or photography, when does it step into the realm of talent release? Uh, good question, and I realized that I that I didn't actually answer the question. Didn't answer my own question. So, uh, in America and many other countries, although probably not all, uh, you can walk down the street and take a picture. You don't have to ask for permission. You can just it's public space, and you can take a picture in public space. Uh, you can do almost anything you want with that picture, except you cannot use it for commercial purposes. So if you want to sell some product with it, then you would need one or many releases. Right, right. Um, but you could make a big print, stick it in an art gallery, and you could sell it for money in the gallery as an art object, and even that is acceptable. Hmm. It's just commercial, basically advertising, when you couldn't. Um, and, and does that cover that? Yeah, that's good. Great. Uh, and the answer to my own question, which is kind of answered already, but I, since 2007, had been uh, a free culture, open source uh, zealot, uh, but didn't until last summer make this connection. I was uh, attending a program in Hollywood at um, an institution called the Free School of Architecture. So given the title, Free School of Architecture, you can already tell I was having a, a blast at this place. And one day they asked us to walk down the street, they were actually located on Hollywood Boulevard, walk down the street uh, and have an experience and then come back and write an essay about it. So I walked down Hollywood Boulevard and I turned uh, down Coenga heading south towards Sunset. Um, and I passed this lot where I don't know if there was gonna be some big party or concert or whatever later on, but there's this, this gate and this big bouncer guy and he just kind of stared at me like, how dare you walk down my piece of street. <laughs> Somebody else came along with some, you know, fancy credential and he opened the gate for that person to get in and then closed it. And it sort of occurred to me that the amazing thing about the street is that you don't have to know people, you don't have to have status, you don't have to have money, you don't have to have credentials. The street is a, one of the few places, there are a lot of streets, but streets and parks are, place, are public places that we own as a group and you can go there, even if you don't have the friends, the connections, the money, the status, the whatever. And it occurred to me that the street is an open source platform. Uh, so that was, uh, that was an, another part, I guess part two of my epiphany. Okay, I think, I think that was the enough about me section. Um, so you already know that WordPress is open source and there are you know, a number of really great open source platforms like Joomla, Drupal, Jekyll, Ghost, and then there are all kinds 
of uh, closed source or proprietary platforms that you might make a website for any of the things we all talked about just a, a minute ago, like Squarespace, Wix, anything that begins with a W that isn't WordPress, basically. Wix, Weebly. There's actually, do you know this? I have not made this up. There's actually a platform called otherpeoplespixels.com. <laughs> So built into the name of the website, they are telling you right up front that you are building your house on somebody else's property. Uh, which is, if you think about it, kind of nuts. Um, and obviously with social media like Facebook and many others, I think everybody today understands that, anybody, everybody familiar with the film Soylent Green? Yeah. So Silent Green predates the internet, but obviously on social media today, it's valuable. I'm not telling you not to use it, but you know, we do understand that basically we are all digital Silent Green at this point. So. How many people have never seen Silent Green? Oh my God. Never seen no. it. No. We just, we, yeah, nobody's ever seen it. We just know what it is. Oh yeah. Oh, let's play. Um, so here's, uh, here's a couple guys you probably know, Tim O'Reilly and Richard Stallman. So Richard Stallman, ever, are you familiar with his story? So he was a programmer at MIT using the Unix system and he loved Unix and he loved being a programmer at MIT and he was like in heaven, um, but he began to realize that proprietary software was limiting what you could do and limiting operability. And so he ultimately left his dream job at MIT and founded the free software movement. And the reason they have these signs, so, so Tim O'Reilly's talking about open source, which is what most people talk about these days, probably. But Richard Stallman insists on the term free software because he, he thinks free is such an important word. And you might see the terms Libra and gratis. So Libra means, well, so gratis means no cost, as in free beer. And Libra, as in liberty, as in free speech. Um, and we kind of talked about that. So, let, so does anybody know what the four freedoms are? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a nerd. So you've got the... Uh, Did I just say it backwards? No. You know, I can't recite it on, on memory, I'm afraid. I understand them, but I'm terrible when I'm put on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> four freedoms? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Anybody ever heard of the four freedoms? The, the work of art by Rockwell or the concept of the four freedoms? Either one. Tell us either one. Or, or, or <laughs> bonus <laughs> points if you know the difference. It was a very famous piece of art by Rockwell in Look Magazine or back in the 60s. Probably looked like that. That is it. And what's that about? The four freedoms. Freedom of speech, worship, want, freedom from want and fear. Freedom from fear. And is that what we're talking about today? I would say so. A little bit it is, but we're talking about a different four freedoms, right? Uh, the four freedoms of software? Yeah, that. I have no idea. <laughs> Anybody know? Okay, something new. Yeah, oh. Copy and paste. <laughs> That's pretty close. <laughs> I guess two of them. Okay, so so you're correct that we we kind of are talking about these four freedoms, but but technically these are not the four freedoms we're talking about. We're talking uh, we're talking about the freedom to use, the freedom to study, the freedom to modify, the freedom to share, which is the freedom that you are given whenever you use open source software. So use. You can use it any time, any place, for any reason. You can study it. So with closed, soft, closed source software, you don't have access to the source code. It just is what it is, and it might be useful to you, and it might be not, and you don't know. With open source software, you can study it. You can also modify it. You can also share it. So some of the people in this room are very technical people. I am not one of them. I'm an artist. I don't write code. So the question that you could ask me is, well, great, Glenn, you have the freedom to study WordPress or any other open source software and the freedom to modify it, but you're not very technical. What good does that do you? Glad you asked. 
<laughs> Anybody familiar with Firefox? Anybody familiar with Waterfox? So Waterfox is a Firefox fork that this guy, Alex Contos, started uh, in 2011 when he was 16. Um, so Firefox, as you might know, is a great open source web browser. I've, I've used Firefox and then, I don't know, maybe a year ago, uh, they changed the architecture of Firefox in some way and a lot of older plugins no longer worked. Uh, they didn't conform. And a plugin that I use is called Fire FTP, which is how I FTP content to a web server. Now, I don't really know, to be honest, I didn't take the time to find out um, why the architecture changed and why these older plugins don't work. I mean, no doubt there's a good reason, uh, but I'm just a lazy artist. So all I knew was that a plugin I rely on to do work that I, like to, I need to do doesn't work anymore and the Fire FTP author said I'm not updating it to this new architecture. So I, there were probably a number of paths to the solution. Um, but what's kind of important to appreciate is that if this was Safari, I'd just be out. The source code isn't available. It would be an, an inconceivable task to reverse engineer Safari. And even if you could somehow do it, Apple would sue you. But because it's an open source project, a 16-year-old can take that code and say, I'm going to write a new version. So he's focused on speed and security, but also on a, on a platform that still supports this older architecture of these plugins. So even though I'm not writing code, the fact that it's open source, the fact that it has the freedom to study, to modify, to share, means that I can use that Firefox, this, this Waterfox fork of uh, Firefox and still run my Fire FTP and keep going the way I've been going. So I've received really powerful benefits from somebody else's ability to work with open source software. Which brings us to soup. <laughs> so let's say I have free gratis soup that I'm going to give you for zero dollars. So I give you this packet of soup and I say you cannot know what is inside this soup. But you can have it, you can mix it with hot water and you can eat it. It will nourish you, it will satisfy your appetite, you just don't know what you're eating. <laughs> so maybe you have issues with MSG or gluten or who knows what ingredient and this soup is going to make you sick. Maybe you don't have any of those kinds of issues but maybe you're vegetarian or vegan and this soup contains animal products so it's not going to make you physically sick but it's soup that is going to not be consistent with the way you choose to live in this world. Again, you just don't know. Or maybe you have no ethical issues, maybe you have no health issues, maybe you just think this soup is pretty tasty, but I'm a clever kitchen person and I think I could make tastier soup. With the packet of soup that, and the unknown ingredients, you have nowhere to go. But with open source soup, when I not only give you the packet of soup, but I also give you the recipe, give you the source code, you can look through that source code, that recipe, and you can say, oh, look, MSG, I don't want this, I'm gonna substitute something else. Or, oh, look, animal products, I don't want this, I'm gonna substitute something else. Or, hey, this is really tasty, but I'm clever, I could substitute some ingredients or add these other things and make even tastier soup. So with open source soup, you still get fed, and I could still give you that free packet of soup, but you now have options. You now have flexibility. Also, if the soup company goes out of business, you can still make your own soup. You can still have that recipe that you liked. Whereas, you know, again, I mean, Apple's probably going to be around for a while, but if, if they go out of business or Google, as you know, discontinues products all the time. Your favorite Google product is always going down, right? <laughs> so, you know, if, if Safari doesn't exist, you're not going to be able to fork it yourself. It's just dead. So open source soup is really good, I think. Alex. 
Yeah. Anybody know this guy? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why I picked this slide. I think just because... Because um, he has good hair? Yeah, it's the hair. So this is Alex Vasquez. He's a, he's a local WordPress type. And this is him. <laughs> so this is apparently our, like the hottest chip ever made. And the one chip challenge is to eat it and not drink a glass of milk for five minutes. And so this is his... Facebook broadcast. I don't know why he chose <laughs> Facebook, but it, probably because the people are there. But anyway, what I actually want to talk about is community, though, that um, in addition to the other ideas that, that I've just mentioned, WordPress as an open source project has the potential to create community. And oh, gee, look at this room. This is your proof. Um, as I'm sure you know, there are word camps all over the globe. And it's just this large, robust community of interaction and sharing. And it's amazing. And if you think about it, with an open source project, the community controls the software. With a closed source project, the software controls the community. So at its best, open source can be an instrument of empowerment. At its worst, closed source can be an instrument of unjust power. Do you guys have questions about anything? <laughs> Thoughts? Questions? So, corporate food, farm to table. Yeah, there you go. So you're talking about this balance that doesn't, we think exists, but it doesn't. Okay. Because how many people in here do farm to table? How many people have a farmer that they directly talk to that delivers their food? Most of us go to a store. We process food all the time. Is that good? Ugh, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but no, corporate food is bad for us. It's processed, you know, all these things. But we, but we look at convenience. And also when you talk about that balance between open source and applications that are developed in the commercial world, they're very vertical, they have a single silo. With WordPress, a lot of people attempt to replicate that for profit motives too. Sure, the core of WordPress is open source software and you have a lot of open source in plugins. Some plugins are for free, some of them you pay for. Some people make their living off of plugins. So there's still some balance that kind of sifts through into yeah. the open source without a doubt. Yeah. And obviously, a, a project like WordPress uh, is partially helped out by a company like Automatic, or a project like Drupal is helped out by a company like Acquaint. So, but that was a decision by the developer to make the core open source and then add on products, you know, free. And then if you want this functionality, you, you get a subscription for this extra functionality within this plugin. That's pretty classic that goes back yeah. many, many years. Yeah. And you could have other analogies in numerous other industries outside of software and the web and the internet, without a doubt. Other questions? Other thoughts? Yes? Should I avoid free soup if it's made out of soil and green? <laughs> <laughs> um, soil and green, yes. Soil and green, not so much. No. <laughs> We have no strong opinion on that. I think I think you're on your own. But today in Silicon Valley, Soylent is is it drives development. The new Soylent products. Have you seen those? No. Uh, tell me. Well, this this guy lives off of Soylent. It's a and that's what he calls it. It's a, a drink that you drink three times a day. A lot of the developers in Silicon Valley live off of it. It's Getting not made to of people. Yeah, it's not made of people. Oh, it's like it's green, like monster or something. No, no, no. It's it's there's multiple products within the product set. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so it is made of people? No, it tastes like it's made of people. It tastes like it's made of people. <laughs> Any questions, thoughts? Yeah. So you are I am bequeathing you and you are Lord God of WordPress. For well, one day, what would be the first thing that you did, changed, added? Fix yeah. Gutenberg? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. 
Oh, that's good information. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> that was it. That was my question. <laughs> that's a good question. What if you were Lord God would have pressed for one day? Uh, I, I claim no religious affiliation. <laughs> I will say that I have worked with a lot of artists over the years. Um, mixed media, um, uh, performance artists, writers, all kinds of you know, painters and whatnot. And working with an artist as a person that provides services through WordPress or a lot of other environments, the artists see the world in a different way. But it's a good perspective because it can be so different, but it can give us insight. And that's what you've done today, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Hope you've been enjoying WordCamp. Hope you have a great day tomorrow. And uh, WordPress on. <laughs>